I told my daughter today um, that, uh, you know, she's like, you know, she knew that I was down here. She said, man, I hope you take some, some time off. I said, yeah, I am probably on Wednesday. I got work to do today, tomorrow, and uh, Tuesday. But I'm trying to do this for a reason. A lot of you guys have a lot of the same reasons, but I'm, I'm super, super serious about my reasons, right? Like, like, I got to be that blessing for my kids, kids, kids. Got to. I got to be that turning point. So until, until I become that turning point, you know, we're going to work on vacations. We're going to work on vacations. I thought about taking the day off. I think if you guys were on the call um, last Wednesday, I said that I was going to take some time off. Um, I lied. Um, I, tr I tried to. I really did. But um, I was like, you know, you know, how could I tell them to work through it if I'm not working through it? So here we are. And uh, we got beautiful uh, Dominican Republic out there. You see, like, a little swimming pool. I'm stunting on them right now, man. Whoa, boy. Walk right out into the pool. Get your feet wet. Unlimited drinks. I don't drink alcohol, but, you know, at least I get – I walk around with the, with the virgin, uh, what they call the virgin pina coladas with the little umbrella in it. You know what I'm saying? I'm bougie like that. But um, number one, <laughs> thanks so much for you guys being here, man. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Again, I apologize. Um, I thought it went through. Normally it does. But, you know, you're working with Wi-Fi. That's not always the greatest. So um, I apologize. So that's why we're kind of giving people a couple more seconds to hop on here. But we're going to go ahead and get started. So today we're going to talk about something called rental arbitrage. As you guys know, I've been telling people um, <clears throat> that I'm coming out with this uh, short-term rental playbook. It's the STR playbook. And it's one of, the, one of the, the tools that you really need to understand and have in your tool bag um, as a real estate investor, okay? For a couple of different reasons, whether or not you are fixing and flipping, whether or not you're wholesaling, whether or not you're doing buy and holds, why, whether or not you're doing, uh, you're the money guy or the money girl, um, and you're doing hard money lending, you, no matter where you're at in that process or what, which one des you decide to kind of dig your heels into, um, if you understand that there are buyers out there, if there are people out there that are looking for these type of properties, you can take a deal that you thought was a trash deal, a deal that you thought that wouldn't work, and you can turn that into a paycheck for yourself. You can turn that into a paycheck for yourself because you are aware and have other tools that other people don't have. That the normal um, real estate investor is just going to, you know, just know what they know and they're not going to take the time to educate themselves and learn another skill, right? And that's all it is, right? That's all it is. And everybody's job there's probably not just one way that you do something. As you progress, as you um, uh, obtain more uh, knowledge and time and tenure, you start to learn of different ways of being able to do the, the same thing. And the same thing that we're trying to do is what? Get paid. So we're trying to learn as many different ways as we can and be good at as many different ways as we can to get paid. So my job as your coach is just to expose you, right? You don't have to do anything with this. You, don't have, you can say, hey, Tommy, this is great knowledge. I don't want to do anything with it. I understand it, but that's on you, right? But at least I've exposed you to it. There are buyers out there that are buying properties, looking at them specifically for short-term rentals. We say short-term rentals because that's the big picture. What most people know by is Airbnb. Airbnb is like somebody saying, I'm going to buy some Nikes. Like we all understand they're going to buy Nikes. Or they might buy some sneakers. So Airbnb is like the household name, right? But really what Airbnb does is turn long-term rentals or long-term purchases, if you buy the house, into short-term rentals, okay? And so that's what the STR playbook is about. It's short-term rentals and how to utilize short-term rentals, not just through Airbnb, but through a whole host of other things, all right? We're going to talk a lot about Airbnb because this is what everybody knows. But here's what I want to do. You guys, get ready because I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you like a little sneak peek. You guys are literally... Literally, besides me, I just saw the finished product. I promise you, I just saw the finished product. That's why I've been running around with my head cut off, checking my head cut off, right? Uh, because I, I just saw the finished product. Um, and so you guys are literally, besides myself, the first group of people to see um, a real live walkthrough of how I walk through an Airbnb, what I'm thinking about as 
clients come to me and say, hey, I want you to set up an Airbnb for me. I'm going to pay you $5,000. I'm going to furnish everything for it. All I want you to do is find it for me and set it up. And so after we get this thing set up and I give them instructions, I'm going back and I'm walking through the property and I'm pointing out what they should do, what they shouldn't do, right? And so you're going to watch this thing. Um, this is actually a part of, in the, this is one of the things that are in the course. You're the first people to get a chance to see this. And so um, we're going to go ahead and kind of show you a little bit about the course. And then we're going to go ahead and watch that video. It's about 17 minutes long. There's going to be a lot of things that I want you to take notes on, okay? Um, because a lot of these, um, not a lot of these things, all of these things are super, super important when it comes to running a short-term rental business. And here's the key when running a short-term rental business. You want to be able to run a short-term rental business from anywhere in the world. That's the goal. It's not to get bogged down and have to be running back and forth, cleaning stuff and, and opening up doors and bringing towels to people, okay? That, anybody can do that. Anybody can just get on Airbnb and sign up as a host and run out there their apartment, right? This is how you do it and you run it and you could be halfway across the world and things just run flawlessly. It's so that you can be out of the business so you can work on your business, not in your business. Too many times as entrepreneurs, we are bogged down within our business. And that's, that's a phase, there's, there's a reason for that. There's a phase for that. But we can, we can especially with, with short-term rentals, we can navigate and get around that phase very, very quickly, okay? Let me um, share my screen real quick. And all right, so just like our wholesaling course, um, it looks very similar, right? So you guys are very familiar with what these looks like, what this looks like. We got all our different modules. With the wholesaling course, there's more modules, but there's less things in each module. Okay. So these are all the modules. There's um there's uh, nine modules and we got some bonus videos down here that we're going to talk about. But each one, once we open this thing up, um, goes into depth, right? There's hours and hours of uh, information here every step of the way. Um, even something like um, creating a simple website. So if you open this thing up, we go here. I'm going to blow this thing up so you guys can see it a little bit bigger. Um, let me shut up here. You guys can hear the sound, correct? I can only see a couple people, so just give me a thumbs up. Okay, perfect. All right, everybody, we are here. We're so this even if you don't know how to set up a simple website, we're going to walk you step by step how to set up um, how to set up a website that's tailored more towards a short-term rental business. Okay, so we're literally going to walk you through everything that you need to have. Um, in order to do this. But the one thing that I want to, I want to focus on today, I told you there's a 17 minute video that I want to, I want to focus on um, because I want you guys um, to, um, to really understand what it looks like when you're walking through a short term rental and some of the, the cues and some of the, the signs that your short term rental is going to be successful or not. Um, and so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, here it is. Um, yeah, we'll do that one first. All right, so this one I'm gonna mute myself out. Um, I want you guys just to listen to this. I can, when I have it in this mode, I can only see a couple people. Right now I can see Gordon, um, Molin, Duke, and Ryan. So at this point, I can't see anybody else because the screen is really small here for, the, for you guys. So I'm gonna rely on you guys. If I ask you, can you hear, can you just give me a thumbs up? Um, so we can make sure that uh, we're good to go. Okay. All right. So I'm going to put this one on and I'm going to shut up. What's going on, everybody? Man, we are out in front of an Airbnb uh, property. Ryan, you're saying no? Can't hear it? No sound? No sound. Let's try this again most efficient so Sam? when we put this thing on the market we get bookings after bookings trying to close in on that 100 percent booking so come on with me as we walk in here we're going to show up everything show you everything that you need to have set up first and foremost kind of want to take a little quick pan around look at the neighborhood the neighborhood is a uh a b or c areas which we want to be i really don't want to be in a d or an f class neighborhood as you can see this is a nice nice neighborhood. 
grass cut. So when someone comes up, they're going to feel nice and safe uh, as they come into this neighborhood. So security. So we obviously need to have our guests getting in and out of our property, but you don't want to have to come and meet them every single time to go ahead and open up the key, give them the key. And you don't want to have one of those little lock boxes on there where they can take the key with them. I've had that happen before. They take the key, they put it in their pocket. Next thing they're on the clean and you have to chase down your key or, or get it, get your lock changed. So what we have here is an, an August lock. I'm going to show you the backside once we get in here. But this company is called August, and they have a Bluetooth-enabled um, uh, keypad. And you just put your code in, and you're going to press this little red button, and it will open up the mechanism here. Also, we have a ring, which is motion activated. So as they approach, as they approach here, this camera is going to cut on. It's going to let me know that, hey, someone's in my property. This is really, really good when you say, when someone says, hey, I'm only sleeping six people here, right? And you see 10 people come inside the property. That way, this can actually charge for those extra people. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. So let's pop one in here. Show you the back side of this thing. All right. So as we come in here, you can see the back side of this door on this August lock. You have this mechanism here that actually turns the bolt. So if you want to lock it manually, you can do this. But the best part about this is that this is, uh, I can operate this from my phone. So I can be in another country and unlock this, this lock, or I can give my guest their own dig, uh, four to six digit code so they can come in here and operate that lock on the outside. The best part about it is as they check out, when they check out at 11 a.m., they have that lock deactivate or that code deactivate it so it no longer works on this lock, right? So this is some of the things that you need to have in place so that you can be mobile, so you can be out and you can enjoy life and not have to be back and forth actually doing the day-to-day -day business on your, on your Airbnb or your short-term rental. All right, so as we move on in here, we're going to take a quick look, just kind of pan and look at the, the living room area. So this is what we call in our entertainment space. In, in, and when, we, when we're doing these Airbnbs, you really break everything down into four spaces, bedrooms, bathrooms, uh, kitchens, um, and entertainment spaces. So this would be considered an entertainment space. So right off the back, right off the back, you can see that it's, it's not really cluttered. There's not that's just flowing this thing up, just messing this thing up. So we want to make sure that we have a lot of space here because it's going to uh, give us the best pictures and pictures and reviews sell on Airbnb. So we need to have some space here to make it look like it's bigger than what it really is. One thing right off the back that I would change though, we need to have some type of art. This would be a very good wall to have a big, nice piece of art. Art is something that I like to spend some money on. A lot of this furniture, this is secondhand stuff, stuff you can get really, really cheap. But the art, the art is what really attracts people in because it's really going to make you stand out from all the other Airbnbs. Okay, we have a TV over here. Now, a lot of people, they want to go big and get these huge TVs. I recommend 42 to 50 inch. That's it. And try to get a smart TV. If you can't get a smart TV, then maybe get one of those, uh, those Chromecast or something like that where they can hop in and, and, and log into a Netflix. You want to have those Netflix and Wi-Fi passcodes right here prominent somewhere where they're going to see it as soon as they come in. Okay. Those are things that we need to kind of check off. Here, we're going to talk about this. We're going to do a quick little pause here because I really want to talk about this. To the naked eye, this just looks like a, a closet. But this right here is one thing that I would change. I would put another electronic lock on this door right here. It's going to cost you about 70 bucks for something like that. And I would turn this into a made closet. Super, super important, all right? Your guest checked out at 11, and then you have your next one checking in at 3. You need to be efficient with your time. Your cleaning people need to be efficient with their time. Uh, and so as soon as they come in here, they need to have everything they need, um, all the supplies, all the extra stuff, all the towels, all the washcloths, everything that they're going to need should be in this one closet. So there's a centralized place for all your cleaning supplies. So I would go ahead and put some racks in here. I would put my, my, um, my vacuum cleaner, all my cleaning supplies in this one thing. And I would have some racks with just stacks and stacks of towels and toilet paper and toilet tissue. You want to have extra. You last thing you want to have is a guest come in here, they spill a bottle of wine or something on the floor and they use all your towels to wipe up the floor. And now you don't have any more towels for your next guest, right? The reason why we want to put an electronic rock on this is because we don't want our guests to get in here. Guests are going to have kids. Some of them may be responsible. Some of them may not be responsible. And they see that this is here. Now they have all these extra towels and they're using up all your extra towels. So put an electronic lock on here that your housekeeping uh, person has access to and they only have access to. Okay. Um, other thing that we want to have in here as well, we would have a, a checklist for our housekeeping. So they know, okay, in the living room, I need to do this. In the, in the kitchen, I need to do this. So they're just literally going to check it off. And if we get a complaint later on, 
if something goes wrong, if something's dirty, the bathroom's dirty or something like that, we can see, okay, did you check it off? No, I didn't check it off. Okay, you're responsible for it. Come back out here and clean it. Okay. Checks and balances. So we're gonna move in here through the, uh, into the kitchen. Um, again, nice, big, bright, open kitchen. We want to kind of keep it that way. Nice, keep it open and, open and bright. We already have that entertainment space over there. We don't need to clutter this thing up with another table. Keep it open. This is not a place where you're going to live. This is where you're going to have guests coming in and out. So we have a little pantry here. Um, and right here, this is very good, but I would put it somewhere else. So in this pantry, they have the first aid kit, okay? What I would do with this, instead of having it in here, it's super, super important. It also allows you to check off that little box on Airbnb. Shows that you have more um, safety items here. I would take this, this little first aid kit and I would put it up here, uh, very prominent in case someone needs it. Um, they have access to it immediately. Um, right off the back, I'm not seeing it. I don't see a fire extinguisher, right? So what I would do is there's a little can, um, uh, almost like an aerosol can, no bigger than a hairspray can, that you just put that fire extinguisher right here or right here next to the, to the stove where most of the time you're going to have a fire at. And that allows you to also to check off that little safety item on Airbnb, right? Nice, clean appliances. There's nothing going on too much here. As you can see, we're not going crazy with, with expensive glassware, just basic, basic stuff, right? Want to just keep everything nice and clean. Big thing here, coffee. I know it's, 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 uh, it's kind of like a small item to purchase, but having a coffee machine is perfect. What I would rather do is have a Keurig, okay, and not use the K-cups, not use the other ones that are like that, but the, the re re reusable uh, cups. That way you just get regular coffee. You go to Costco or Sam's and get the big bulk coffee, and you keep that here, and you can eliminate having to deal with these things. And uh, that will be just a little bit smoother for your guests. All right, so this is a three-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath. We have a small bathroom down here. All right, so we got a bathroom here. It's a half bath, really simple. It's kind of a tight space, okay? Nice, bright, clean. We have our hand towel here. We have our hand soap. So, uh, toilet looks clean. We just want to do a quick check, make sure our housekeeping people came here and did what they were supposed to do. Nice, clean bathroom. Very simple. We don't have to over overcomplicate this thing. Let's move on up back upstairs. Downstairs looks pretty good. A couple of tweaks that we would make, but for the most part, we look pretty good. Let's go see what upstairs take, uh, looks like. As we're going through here, we're just checking for cleanliness, making sure that our cleaning people are coming in here doing what they're supposed to be doing. And we now have our entertainment space here. So we have this entertainment space, all right? What I like about what they've done here is that this is a sleeper sofa. So we have this sleeper sofa where now we have three bedrooms, but now we also can offer this as well. So we can get an actually another two people on the sleeper sofa. So now we can sleep eight. One thing that I like to do is, have, is provide air beds. Not the cheap ones that you pump up with hand or anything like that. The ones that have the pump that's already inside the air bed because now you can offer that. You buy one or two more of those and you can offer that as an extra bonus if people have extra guests. What happens is if this place sleeps six plus two in the soup, uh, sleeper sofa, that's eight. If they have 10, you can charge people, and I do charge people, 25 to $30 extra per person for every person that has to sleep on that air bed because they're costing me water, they're costing me electricity, right? So I need to charge for that. Here we got this sleeper sofa. Um, what I would do here, this is an entertainment space. I probably would change this TV and put a projector on. So you can go on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, something like that. You can find a really, really cheap, inexpensive projector that'll project onto this wall. You really don't even need the projector screen because the wall is white. Just having something like that, having that little extra, is gonna make your place pop. It's gonna make it stand out. Every other Airbnb that's in the area is probably not going to do that. And it's so inexpensive that it's worth it. It comes back to you in gold. So this is a good little space. I would just cup, change a couple little things and uh, we'd be good. So we're going to roll in here. This is the master bedroom. So nice, 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 big open master bedroom. This, these beds, um, the actual bed, I think it was like 115 bucks off Amazon. It's, it's ridiculously cheap. But everything else that you see in here is all used. All these things are coming from Goodwill. They're coming from um, uh, Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. You don't have to go crazy spending a whole bunch of money. What I would do here, though, is I would put, especially since, I don't know if you can see this here, see these little marks here, right? I probably would put a nice big painting on that piece just to go right over the bed, cover up these marks, and just add something appealing. Because as you can kind of take a look around the room, you kind of see it's, it's kind of bland, right? If we add that nice big 
uh, pop of color with some with some uh, uh, a painting here on the wall. It's really really going to make it stick out. Closet here, perfect. That's all we really need. One of the things that you need to have in, in all your properties, don't forget it. Man, this is important right here. You're gonna have people that are coming in that are, are, are here for business, that are gonna be here, um, they're gonna have kids, they're gonna wanna go in and out. And so many times I've personally checked into Airbnbs and they don't have something as simple as a little $30 uh, iron. And we also need an ironing board. So we're gonna have to put that and let them know we need an ironing board here. Hangers, great. What I would do here is a little trick, right? What is one of the things that people always ask about when it comes to uh, staying in a hotel, right? It's towels, towels. So they get here, they use their towel, they throw it on the ground and they want extra towels. So what I do is I provide a full towel set for everybody who's saying that's coming, they're coming here. Then I get one of those under the cover, I'm sorry, under the bed tote bags, two extra sets of towels. And I will keep that somewhere up here probably um, in the master bedroom the reason why the master bedroom this is probably where the adults are going to stay at so when they text me on the app and say hey we need extra towels i'm gonna say hey i've already um strategically placed some extra towels for you up here in the master bedroom once they break the seal i know they opened up those towels i will then also keep an extra piece underneath one of the beds in the master bedroom but this type of bed obviously we can't get anything underneath here but if i have space in another bed i'll put uh, that same type of bag underneath the bed so I'm hiding an extra towel, an extra set of towels. So I just know how people are. If they see it there, they're gonna just take it off, they're gonna use it, they're not gonna think that hey, somebody else has to put it there. All right, let's move on into the bathroom here. Again, nice, light, clean, good thing to have, need to have, hair dryer, okay? Make sure you have these, these are all little things that you don't really think about until uh, it's time for people to start asking you questions and wondering why they don't have these things. Then a little linen closet, nothing much here, just some stuff there, you don't really need to keep uh, too much in here. If you have a linen closet, if you have a linen closet, obviously keep all your towels in there. If you don't, if your place is smaller, what I recommend is getting an over the toilet like little rack. I'm quite sure you guys have seen that before. And then your maids, your, your cleaning people can put all those things, all those sets accordingly right into that rack. So, so I recommend getting these. You can get these off of Amazon as well. It's a little uh, three piece uh, um, soap, conditioner, and shampoo dispenser, all right? That way you can fill this stuff up. It's a lot cheaper than having to buy the little individual ones. And then you can't really use, you know, bar soap. Nobody wants to use bar soap after someone else. So this is a really, really good uh, and efficient way of having uh, uh, your soap and your, your conditioner and shampoo right here in your shower. All right, let's move on and see what the other bedroom, bedrooms look like. All right, we got... No, little linen closet here, nothing, nothing too special. One thing I'm noticing here from there and also in there, this is the only room so far that I've seen that has twin size bed mattresses. Now, there, there's two, two schools of thought here. People, some people like that because the, of the fact that, you know, maybe, maybe kids are here, they don't want to sit in the same bed. But when you start to accumulate multiple properties, now, um, you have to come up with a system and figure it out how, how, how can you quickly change out the linens. So if everything is one size, if everything is a queen size bed, then no matter what pile they pull from, they're always going to be able to put that fitted sheet. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? The one with the elastic on it that you can never get right. It takes you 10 minutes to put on there. You can always find uh, whatever sheet on and put it on whatever bed because they're all the beds are going to be standard. So me personally, I like to keep all my beds a queen. I don't go king, and I don't want anything less than a queen. Pretty much every room you can put a queen in, and that way you can buy one, um, one size uh, sheet um, and, beds, um, uh, and bedding for those beds, and you don't have to worry about having to mix and match things. But again, as you can pretty much see, this is a very basic, basic room. They're not coming here to have you know, posters and everything all over the room. You don't have to go crazy with your furnishings. This is very, very simple. They have a desk here with a, a little plug in here and they have the little chargers for, your, for their phones. So you've got the USB ports there. Really, really simple, but it's also something that you can see that someone actually took some thought and, and, and care about their guest um, to have stuff like this. Check out the last bedroom and see if we can find anything that we might wanna work on before we go into this bedroom here. Again, really simple. Not going to be a dead horse. Again, this, this, this mattress is 115 I think, on Amazon. Bed looks pretty much the same. Very standard bed. Nothing much to go over here. And lastly, the last bathroom. Let's take a quick look and see if it's pretty standard. 
All right, so this one doesn't have that. I would add that that uh, shower, that soap and conditioner and shampoo dispenser right here. Add that there. And uh, But everything else looks pretty good, nice and clean. Um, this one just recently got, got cleaned, so I would I might take a note uh, of some things for my cleaning people. Um, just to, hey, hey, you know, check some of this out, check the toilet bowls. I found a couple of things. You always want to uh, just kind of double check. This is your business. This is something that's going to help provide income for you and your family. So you don't want to just kind of set it and forget it. You need to come in and double check your cleaning people. So I think that kind of wraps it up. Um, I appreciate you guys walking through me. I hope we were able to provide some good value for you. Hope you learned something. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Let me stop sharing real quick. <clears throat> all right. So through that walkthrough, through that walkthrough, um, who here picked up some things that they should be thinking about? Who here picked up, picked up some things they should be thinking about? Anybody ever think about a maid closet? How important that is, right? Super, super important um, because we have a limited window to get that thing turned over. Everybody's here. If you have a short-term rental, your goal is to be booked, obviously, 100% of the time, right? Um, so everybody wants that, but are you prepared for that, right? Um, Gordon, who's on here, he, he has, uh, he's the owner of a CrossFit gym that I go to in, in Smyrna. And I had, a lot of you guys know I had a gym. And in the beginning, I wanted all these clients, and I wasn't really prepared. And when I actually got them, I was like, oh, wow, I'm not really prepared for business, right? And so... The worst thing that can happen, not the worst thing that happens, it's kind of a good problem to have, but it really, really eats at you when you do all this work and then business is coming and then you're not, not prepared for it. And now you look like a fool, really, because you get that one time where someone comes in there and because you didn't think of something like a maid closet um, or because you didn't think to stock. If I, have a, if I have a property that has three bedrooms and each bedroom sleeps two people, okay, that's six people. If I have that type of property, I need to have about 36 towel sets. Nobody thinks about that stuff because people just, we're not thinking that, you know, people are going to go through that many towels. But when it happens and you don't have any towels for the next guest because we're all trying to get 100% occupancy, right? We're trying to get booked every single day and you get stuck with something like that. Um, like those, those are real things. Like well, when I talked about, you know, the, the, the wine being busted on the floor and spilling wine, right? And then they just take all the towels. Some of you probably have done that before, right? <laughs> I just took the towels and just used the towels to wipe everything up, right? Um, those towels cost money. They, they ain't come out of your pocket, right? But I show how to do that. So here's, here's what I do. Here's the trick on the towel situation because that's, it's really a pain in the butt. It really is. Here's the trick on the towel system. Number one, have way, way more than what you think you need, okay? And the way that you do that, up front, you gotta pay for them. It's true, you gotta pay for them, but they're roughly, when you break it down, you got a, um, a body towel, um, like a hand towel, and then like your washcloth. Those three, if you buy them from the right spots on Amazon, you go some, find some other places, you can find some cheap ones, or some decent ones off of, um, like when some places have sales and stuff like that, they should cost you about five dollars per. Excuse me, five dollars per set. So at five dollars per set, you need to have a good amount set, a good amount ready um, from the very beginning. But what you do, just like with the wine, or just like the water, or just like the the little Andes that put on the pillow, right? Um, you need to understand the cost to everything there is a cost to every item and so once you understand the cost like i know this it's cost me 15 cents per mint per andy's mint it's cost me 15 cents right so or bed i should say right so it cost me 15 cents so if, i know if i need if i have three beds i just do the math right and what i do is i pass that cost on to the client so when the client comes in and they see that bottle of wine they say, oh, that was so thoughtful. They bought us, they gave us a bottle of wine. Little did they know, they bought that wine, bottle of wine. All I did was I found a cleaning company that's charging me $95, and I um, charged them an extra $20 on top of that $95. $5 went to buy some new towels until I get to a certain amount, right? So every, every 
out of that money, of the extra 20 bucks, I'm taking five and I'm setting aside to buy new towels. About $5 is going to buy that bottle of wine, all right? And then we have the bottles of water, okay? We buy the bottles of water in cases of 24 and we get them for like six bucks, five, six bucks, right? But there's a cost to everything that's passed on to them. So when they get there and they get the little, I have the little metal tray with the, with the two bottles of water on the bed, right, on the tray, and the, the, the little fake flowers, right? It's the presentation of it, right? And then they come in the kitchen and there's the bottle of wine with the two glasses. It's the presentation of it, but they pay for it. Okay, that should not come out of your pocket. It's how you present it, right? So what I want to impress upon you guys is through that video, there are like tons and tons of little things um, that um, you need to pick up on. There's tons of little things like making sure um, you have, I've talked about it before on this call, one of the four, either that projector screen, the, a foosball table, an air hockey table, or, um, or something where the together and um, um, you know congregate around this one item, okay? Um, create a memory around that one item, okay? Because what it's going to do, like I said before, it's going to stand out amongst all the other Airbnbs that don't have a, air, a projector. And you only need one of them. You don't have to put all of them, right? But it's going to stand out when um, the the, the uh, individual is scrolling through Airbnb looking at, should I get this one with just the bed and the couch and the sofa, or should I get the one with the foosball table that also has the bed, the couch, and the sofa, right? Which one are you gonna pick? Am I gonna get the one with the plain white walls, or am I gonna get the one with the nice art on the wall? On the wall? You're making your purchase, your whole decision is based off of reviews and photos. If you know, if it's in your, if it's in your price point, you're making a decision based off of reviews and photos because you've never been there before, most likely, unless you're a repeat customer of that same Airbnb, right? You've never been there before, so there's no way that you really know what it is. So you're literally just going off of what other people have said about the place and the photos that are presented to you, okay? So being able to set this thing up correctly, not cluttering it, right? not putting all your junk in it. I made a statement. I said, remember, you're not living here. Your guests are. That is super, super important. I don't care what your tastes are. I don't care if you like, um, you know, black uh, wall paint, wall, um, uh, paint on the walls, and you want like this, this like dark, you know, just gothic look. If that's the way you, your house is, cool, okay? Cool but you're gonna turn a lot of people away if you start to put your own spin on these things, right? If you start to say, well, this is the way I wanna do it, right? This is the way I live. You're not living there, okay? We're talking about this thing and we're talking about rental arbitrage. So arbitrage is nothing more than the art of finding things at a lower price and selling them for a higher price. We're just, this is an exchange of value, right? So all I'm doing all I'm doing is I'm turning a long-term payment into short-term money. So we do the same thing with anything else, okay? You go to Costco, you go to Sam's Club or BJ's or wherever you go in this country, and you buy the, the huge pack of toilet paper, right? You're going to, you're going to spend less per roll than you, do, well, you, than you would if you went out to Publix we went to a regular local supermarket, right? What we're doing, we're buying time. That time is, that it is uh, indicated, how much time is indicated on the contract. The contract is a lease. I am leasing time. I'm leasing this space for a certain amount of time. And because I'm leasing it for 365 days most of the time, I'm getting that Costco, that Sam's Club, that BJ's price. Each one of those days, if I was to lease them individually, they would be worth a lot more than they are collectively when I pay for it and I say I'm going to do it for an entire year. That's all we're doing. We're finding individuals, landlords that say, you know what, Tommy, I just want to go ahead and I just want to, I want to do this thing, but I don't want to do it with the, the short-term stuff. I don't understand it. I don't want to have to come in and give it keys. I don't want to have to deal with maid service. 
I don't want to deal with people texting me in the middle of the night saying they need more towels. They don't want to do it because they don't want to learn it. Okay. They don't realize that they can automate all that stuff. All right. So you find someone like that and says, listen, I'll give you your rent plus the hundred, your rent plus 50, your rent plus 200, depending on how good the night, nice the place is. Right. And they go for it and they give you that long term, that Costco price of a one year lease. And then you turn that lease into something where you're making two, three, or four times as much as what you're paying the lease for. It's really, really simple. It's just arbitrage. I'm getting it. I'm renting it out at 12. So the one in, um, in, in Miami, hopefully we'll be able to film that one. Um, um, I'll show you some of the pictures. So um, the one in Miami, this lady, it's, 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 it's already furnished. I mean, I can't even, there's nothing, I, I don't even really have to do too much. It's already furnished. Let me see if we can see these photos here. All right. So it's already furnished. Okay. All I got to do is right there in Miami, right? Right there in Miami, right across from the AAA Center, right across where the Miami Heat play um, basketball at. If anybody been in the city of Miami, right on Biscayne Boulevard, literally on Biscayne Boulevard, not, not one block off, right there on it. If anybody been here, been to UltraFest or heard of UltraFest, um, not my type of crowd, but I've worked it. Um, and man, they are charging people a hundred plus dollars for a parking spot, let alone a, a place to live, uh, Airbnb that close. Um, what she wants is 2000. I said, I said, I'll give you 2000 plus 200. If you let me short term rental this thing, I will probably make about $7,000 off that property every single month because she doesn't want to learn how to do this. And I'm, I don't live in Miami anymore, okay? But guess what? Guess, what ha guess what's another perk of this? Is when I wanna go to Miami on vacation, guess where I get to stay at for free, right? So that's really not even fair. I'm actually getting paid to stay there, right? Because someone else has already paid my rent um, and already put money in my pocket. So when you start to really, when you can automate this thing, this is really when it turns, anybody can get an Airbnb, but when you can automate it, when you, can, when you don't have to be there for it, it it's just a game changer. So I'm going to open up uh, for some q and I'm going to try to keep my – you guys know how I am, man. I try to go in depth on the, on the question and answering type of thing, but I can't – I have to uh, – <laughs> I have to actually run because I'm, I'm actually in Dominican Republic right now for um, um, my cousin's wedding, and literally he's doing like the the little party, the little wedding reception thing. I, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing there. I'm – I don't do weddings too much, but uh, they're texting me and they're upset that I'm not here. But I said, listen, I got an obligation. I told you guys every Sunday and Wednesday, uh, we're going to make this thing happen. It ain't my fault you got married. I didn't say to do it. I said not to do it. No, I'm just playing. I'm just taking back. I tell them, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I love her. I love her. I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, they might be on the call. So, <laughs> Nikki, if uh, you heard that, I'm sorry. Don't kill me. I love you. Um, so, um, yeah. We're going to have to run the records out. So let's rock it out. Let's hit some questions real quick. Ali, I saw your hands up first. Unmuting. Go ahead, oh. Go ahead man. Okay. Uh, first of all, what's up, bro? How you doing? Hope Good, brother. Good. Um, so I got a quick question. So with you doing the – with us as learning to wholesale and all that great stuff, at what point should we be kind of looking to transition into something like this? Because the way I see it, even wholesaling is pretty much the same stuff I used to be doing on eBay or whatever else is just flipping stuff. All it is. So it is. the question is, as, as we scale, as we figure it out, you know, get past first deal, second deal, whatever it is, at what point should we be like, all right, cool. I'm going to start going towards the next thing. That's a very good question. So that is an individual question for everybody that they need to ask themselves because you might um, like I did, like I've, I started off, I went into my first, uh, real estate investment deals were flips and I got into flips because it looked cool on TV and it ain't cool. I, 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 that's why I don't do flips anymore. Right. Um, so I'm telling you that story because it's going to depend on the individual. Some people might think that they want to do strictly wholesaling and they get into wholesaling like, Oh wow, this is actually work. Right. It takes work to get a wholesale deal. Surprise, surprise. 
So this might be a better suit for them, right? Here's what I would tell you. If you are a wholesaler, you at least, at least need to learn and know how to find these type of properties and the value that they provide. And here's why. You're a wholesaler, you find a property that does not make sense for a wholesale deal, okay? Um, but you have, you have uh, Agatha that in talking at a, at a local RIA, she says that she's really interested in finding a Airbnb. Now, with Airbnbs, one of the ways that we find them is so freaking simple. It's so much easier than finding it on a wholesale deal because all we have to do is find people, landlords that want to rent their property. And guess what? When you're a landlord that wants to rent their property, you give them, you give the world your information because you want the world to call you. You just have to go through the numbers to find the one that's going to allow you to short-term rental it. You see what I'm saying? So if you don't understand that and you don't know how to find the numbers to, work, to tell Agatha, Agatha, this is a good deal. A lot of times I will find something or find something for someone or they'll ask me to find something for them. And I will turn down five, six, 10 of them because I want it to be the right deal for them, right? So you're gonna, you might have to go through some numbers. I'm not going to put Agatha into a property that I don't think she can make money off of. Because if I do, I'm gonna burn that bridge and she'll never do business with me again, right? But if I take the time and it takes me, maybe it takes me another month, maybe it takes me another two months for me to find a good property for her. When she does it, she's going to make money. And guess what? When she makes money and she's making $4,000 a month off a property that she's renting out for 1200, okay? She's gonna have some expendable income where she can, she can give me more money to go find her another property. So whether or not it's right for me or right for you, right now, I can't answer that. But I, as, a, as if you're going to do it as a, you know, for you. But I will tell you as someone who's a wholesaler, you should at least know how to do it. I make $5,000 a pop off of each one, right? And people gladly pay it. And there's people that, and I'm actually cheap. There's people that charge 10. There's a guy in Miami that charges 10,000. And that's not including uh, furniture or anything else. So it's just another way that you can kind of use your knowledge, you know? Legit, thank you. Cool. Uh, Denard, what's up? Where you at, Denard? Uh, what's going on, Tom? How you doing, brother? I'm all right. Um, I just had a question. Um, I'd be kind of late for the meetings because of my stupid job. And um, I was... <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? And I was, uh, I know you talk about the last Sunday and um, what you expect from us, and I, I kind of always miss it, so I just want to know everything that you was asking. Yeah, yeah. So, again, it's, um, we're doing last, it's called Last Call Sundays. Last Call Sundays. So, it's from now on, the last Sunday of the month, um, you're going to be required to have 25 properties skip traced. Okay, and we're all going to get on the call. So we're going to start promptly at seven o'clock. Okay, we're all going to get on the call, and we're going to pull out our lists. You guys, will, everybody will be muted, just like we're we're muted right now. And I want to see everybody's face. So, Antronique, Antoinette, Macy, Lakendra, KC, AMR, Adam, all the people that I can't see. I want to be able to see your face, Denard. You're one of them, right? I want to be able to see your face because this is accountability time. This is going to be the time where we're either going to put up or shut up. I'm on, I want to see if you really want. Everybody, when we do these, when we talk, right, and everybody wants this, wants to live, uh, you know, uh, a better lifestyle, apparently, because we're on this call, right? We want to live a better lifestyle than what we currently have. We want to provide for our families better than what we are. We're, we're, we have some, we feel like there's some obligation that to, to just, just to ourselves, but also to our families that, man, I know I have the potential, which I hate that word. I have the potential to be greater than what I am and I'm not doing it. Right. So that's why we're here. Or that's why we're, we're, we're saying that we're here. But as a coach, I have to hold your feet to the fire. So what we're doing on these last call Sundays, if you're, if you don't show your face, I don't just don't even come on the call. Right. Because what I want to see is I want to see people on the phone making phone calls to the 25 people that you should have found. You should have found more than 25 by now because we're supposed, you should be doing at least 25 a week, but I'm being nice. So within a whole month's time, I need you to find 25 houses and get them skip traced 
so that on the last call, we can all be on the phone together, myself included. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to take people off mute so I can hear whether or not you're really talking to a real person. Okay. And this is the only way um, that we can start getting better as a group. Sometimes, sometimes we need the gentle, you know, pat on the back. And then like my drill sergeant used to say, sometimes you just need to get kicked in the teeth. Right. And so these last call Sundays for a lot of us is going to be that kick in the teeth because we're going to ha I'm going to force you guys to make those phone calls. You have to make those phone calls. So that's that. And then the three, um, three buyers. So finding three buyers, the way that we talked about, find those three buyers, qualify them, go back in the course, qualify them. So I don't want just someone who says they can buy. We need to qualify them to make sure that we're spending our, our, um, our time with the right people. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I like accountability. So that's um, cause I just always miss it. And I was just wondering, I hear you talk about it at the end, but I always miss what you're asking for. So cool. thank you. Give me them 25, man. The quicker you get them 25, the quicker we can get rid of that stupid job. Oh yeah. 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 Definitely. I got you. All right. All right. All right uh, any other questions? Any other questions? You got any questions? I'll right, show your head. Can Craig go ahead. Hey, Craig, uh, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? There we go. Okay, sorry about that. My wife, uh, my wife is from Panama. She's actually in Panama right now, the country. Oh, that's what's up. And so, and so we are looking to, I, uh, I retire uh, next July. So oh, I'm looking to, to do uh, some properties, some Airbnbs. Me and my brother already have one. And I want to leverage and try to do Airbnbs overseas because I know there's a ton of property available and things like that. My question is, because I've been thinking about this here in Louisville as well, should we be looking for, for condominiums versus apartments? Because in some cases, uh, an apartment would be a sublease of a person who owned it if we were to get someone. They have rules and things in the city that go for apartments, but condominiums have rules as well. So what is the specific layout of how you should uh, uh, seek to get an Airbnb in a prime location? What should be the rental agreement? Should it be a condominium or an apartment? So <clears throat> whether or not it's a condominium or an apartment um, doesn't, so a condominium, you're, you're saying that you're going to be actually buying that condo. Is that what you're trying to do? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So either way, either way, the main thing is not whether or not you're buying if you're going to buy it okay I, I can get that i understand that there's nothing wrong with that really what you need to understand is the rules that are attached to both of those so um a lot of condos in their homeowners association will not allow those type of you know um uh short uh subleasing right and so really okay. let's let's just get our vocabulary just correct all right i'm not picking on you craig let's just get our pro vocabulary okay. correct. When, has anybody stayed in airbnb before Yes, right? I have. Has anybody signed a lease? No. So is it a subleasing uh, uh, arrangement? It's not. Okay. Well, what we're doing is commercial commercial leasing. We're we're leasing it under for for business purposes, right? So you can get it, and most people you'll say subleasing. The 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 landlord will understand what you're talking about. I say it all the time. And so just so they get the point, uh, but really they're leasing it to us and I'm just letting other people stay there. Right. Um, nevertheless, there are some uh, HOAs and apartment complexes that don't like that. And they don't want you to do that. I personally try to stay with single family homes or townhomes that don't have HOAs because I don't have to worry about that. Then. The neighbor can be pissed off, but the neighbor doesn't control that person's house. The other thing with condos, if you're buying it, unless you're just, unless you're banking, right, you can do a lot more, you can get a lot more for your money if you just do this rental arbitrage versus actually buying the condo. Now, there's some other benefits to buying the condo, right? You, you have eventual ownership and someone's paying for that condo. I completely understand that. But if you're trying to amass a, um, a, a short-term rental business where you got 10 of them and they're all making four or $5,000 a month on average, right? It's going to take you a lot longer to do that if you have to buy them versus just finding out, finding the rentals. 
okay? Probably okay. From, the, from you purchasing one of them, um, especially if you're not living in them, you know, you know, as not your primary residence and you have to pay 20% down, like just yeah. that alone, you probably would be able to get six of those, five, five, six Airbnbs, especially the way I do it. I don't spend any more than $3,000 on furnishing an Airbnb, right? No more than $3,000. Like all that stuff you saw on that of Airbnb is less than 3K. You just got to know where to go to get them. I'm just as excited about that as I am about the wholesaling because my brother's already doing five grand a month on a house that he bought for 50 and it's probably worth 120 now because he, he rehabbed the whole thing. But I keep trying to tell him to get out of that and just start doing Airbnbs and flip it and keep going. Yeah. He's got a really nice one, a lot of money in it. And I'm just trying to, I think I like the retail arbitrage better uh, overall as a business model, because I think I like wholesaling, but wholesaling is a situation where I want to be able to chase that but I want to have that passive income coming in from these Airbnbs. Correct. Correct. And you can definitely do both. You definitely do both. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, man. No problem, brother. All right, Ali, you got one more? Okay, I'm trying to unmute you. Oh, okay, you're good now. That's it? Okay. Hey, right, so I had a quick question, um, and this is real simple. Um, I was curious the stats is for RVMs. I was curious the stats on RVMs. What I mean when I say that is we say in cold calling, you call 100 people, get you 10 leads, 10 leads, get you one deal, so on and so forth. What's the numbers as far as um, the RVMs? When you do RVMs, should I be doing 200 to get 10? You see what I mean? So I'm trying to, trying to figure out how to lay it out. So, so I'm, just, just understand the numbers that I'm going to give you are just my numbers, right? No, no worries. It's going to depend on the market that you're in, obviously. Right. But um, for me, if I have about 2,000 RVMs, I'm looking at probably getting one or two deals out of those. Probably closer to one. Okay. Okay. So just, so th and that, that's a very, very good point. Um, I think um, a lot of times, um, Aisha, I see your hand. Uh, Gordon, I see your hand. Um, I think a lot of times we don't get the real of the, the real amount of effort that it takes to actually um, make a dollar. And so we think that we're working hard, or we really think that we're working hard. We feel like we're working hard. And then we realize, oh crap, like I'm not working hard enough, right? So I'll give you, I'll give you a quick story. I was talking, I was talking to Max um, and I was like, man, I'm doing these RVMs, man. And you know, I'm only getting like one deal or whatever. He's like, well, how many are you doing? And he was like, uh, that's what I'm like about 2000. He's like, bro, he's like, I'm doing like 20,000 a week. I was like, oh, what? let me shut up then. <laughs> let me stop complaining. <laughs> wow. Okay. Bad. I, thought, I thought I was working. I apparently wasn't. <laughs> right? Yikes. Um, so understanding what it really takes to, to actually get the numbers that you want is huge because you can – you can mentally take yourself completely out the game because you feel like you're working hard and you just haven't been exposed to really understand like, the, like what you're doing is not enough. Right. And it's not that because you can't do it anymore. You just think that you're doing enough. Right. Because right. you've never done it before. So you're just like, man, this feels like I'm doing a lot. So, yeah, if you're doing a couple of hundred, I wouldn't expect too much to come from that. I really wouldn't. Certain markets, certain markets you will. Not in Atlanta, though. Not in Atlanta. Um, certain markets, like slower paced markets, you definitely can do some short, smaller numbers. Thousand, right? I would still be at least in a thousands for sure. Okay. All right. Appreciate it, Tom. Yeah, man. Um, Gordon, I'm sorry, my man. I got to go with the ladies first. I got to go with the ladies first. Uh, Aisha, go ahead. Uh, I'm trying to unmute you, Aisha. I don't know if I'm unmuting you and you unmute yourself. Or maybe, Aisha, why don't you just unmute yourself? How about that? There How's we go. There we go. Hey, how are you? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Thank you. How are you? Good. I just have a question. So if I'm hearing you correctly, to find the Airbnbs, are we looking, are we looking for people who own homes that are renting them or don't? And then we'll just ask them if we can do the short term renting for them absolutely you are hearing me correctly okay i say you have a house you have a house uh -huh. your landlord 
and you put an ad out on Zillow or Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace saying mm -hmm. that you're willing to rent your house out for $1,200 and it's located in um, College Park, mm -hmm. close to the airport, which yes. is close to the largest airport in the United States, the one that's busiest airports in the United States. And so I see that and immediately, I already know, our Carl, uh, Aisha has a two bedroom, one bath, I immediately understand that I'm going to put two queen size beds in there and a mm -hmm. sleeper sofa so I can sleep six. And I'm going to add those two extra little air beds like I talked about. Mm -hmm. So I might even be able to come off. Um, um, and they're really trying to get at me here. They're mad at me now. Um, so I'm thinking <laughs> so I can charge a little bit more, right? Mm -hmm. I know because it's right there by the airport that as long as I am paying attention, attention to the market and what's coming in, who's coming in, who's performing, what movies are going on, a lot of other things that a lot of people are not thinking about, right? They don't, they're not paying attention to um, um, the conference, not paying attention because down there by College Park, Hapeville area, they're not paying attention that Porsche, the little Porsche plant where they where you know, the, headquarter, the headquarters in this area, they're doing an event and all these people are going to be coming here. They're not paying attention to that stuff. Um, I know that if we do that and we set this up correctly, I'm going to get close to 100% occupancy on this thing because mm -hmm. I, have, I already have the people that are coming. So I say, Aisha, I'll rent your place out for 1200 because I know I'm going to make 4000 off of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then that means we should never have to put, like, the, the, the property should be well maintained. It should be well put together so we don't have to do any type of construction work to it or anything. It's just something we just well, kind of it just depends like i'm not i'm definitely not going out there and doing a renovation but gotcha. i might do some, i might throw some paint on the wall okay i might i might you know i might i might even go as far as do something with the flooring right but mm -hmm. that's about it we're not going in there and doing some you know crazy amount okay uh, uh, of work if it okay. is we're taking that off the rent <laughs> okay yeah. thank you so much no problem no problem all right, Gordon, you up? Oh, who that though? Who's that? This is Grace, man. They just came home. You'll meet her at the gym, I'm sure. She's getting into some cereal or something. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's all hands on deck. But I, yeah, I, um, I think I used to kind of touch on what I was asking. I was going to ask about, but I wanted to ask. So of course, I'm assuming you're going to get your renter's insurance, right? Yeah. In the, in the process. It's actually, it's actually short-term renter's insurance, which is different. Okay. Um, we talked about that before. There's a difference between renter's insurance because renter's insurance really would be for me. Okay. But it's really not going to cover, you know how insurance companies are. They're going to try to find any way they could wiggle out of there, right? Right. Short-term renter's insurance. Um, sure. Okay. And, and then the uh, second question was, when you're, you know, when you're approaching these landlords, I, I imagine that there's going to be some apprehension about, you know, working with someone that wants to Airbnb it, you know, um, just because the consistency of the different tenants. How do you kind of talk them through that? Hey, Gordon, um, listen, uh, I'm, here, here's a pamphlet, first of all, to kind of show you about what our company does. We're a professional management company where we do commercial leasing. And what we typically do is this. We have people that are some people. We have some people that are, unfortunately, you know, had a fire and the insurance company has to place them somewhere for a matter of months. Um, right. And so we provide properties for people that are there from either for a day or they might be there for three, four months. Here's the benefits of working with us, Gordon. Number one, you're always going to get your money on time because we're going to pay you um, whether or not we rent that place for a day or if we rent it, you know, for all 30 days. You're going to get paid on time. Number right. two, Gordon. We're going to handle all the minor maintenance, meaning that you're not going to ever get called for the toilet being clogged up. You're not going to get called for the door falling off the hinge or the, you know, um, the window coming off the track. All those little things you don't have to worry about. Anymore. Number three, when you have a normal tenant there, they, you're lucky, lucky once every couple of months. Right. But working with us, your property is probably going to be cleaned a couple of times a week by a professional We're going to maintain the grass. If anything breaks, like a water, a water heater or something like that, we're going to fix it immediately. Right. The water heater breaks, 
but we're going to fix it immediately. And here's the reason why, because that's taking money out of our pocket every day that we can't rent. Right. So there's some benefits to working with us um, besides just getting paid on time. And that's why a lot of uh, landlords choose to work with us, but they, they see that there's less, actually less risk and the property is maintained a lot better. <laughs> you got me about to rent my house to you, man. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right, right. That's awesome. I appreciate it, brother. No problem. Yeah. All right. So, um, just like I, just like, you know, I walked in and just immediately went into that. You guys have to practice that, right? You have to know the benefits so you can articulate the benefits, right? Because mm -hmm. then, and not every, and Gordon might, I might say all that stuff and Gordon might say no. He yeah. still won't say no. And guess what? I don't care, right? Because someone's going to say yes. Eventually someone's going to say yes. Like this property in Miami, I'm, I don't want to me, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just, if somebody eventually is going to say yes. So we just, just like wholesaling, we got to go through the numbers. We got to do our numbers and we got to put the work in. All right. All right. I think we're wrapping up here. I'm going to try to, uh, I'm going to try to um, go salvage um, my, me and my cousin's relationship and uh, apologize to, for not being there with everybody else. Um, so with that, uh, I appreciate you guys being here again, man. I always say, um, where you spend your time is where you love and what you love you spend your time in and I appreciate you guys spending your time here with me learning this let's go out there and let's take some of this information let's actually utilize it um, if you guys are interested um, short-term rental playbook we are doing the live webinar tomorrow we're gonna talk about a couple other things a little more in depth um, um, and you can guys can take a look at it it's gonna be free um, you'll be able to utilize some of the stuff obviously we the course is going to be live starting tomorrow after the webinar. If you decide you want to join, you can do that. Um, if you're not, we're going to talk about all uh, as, as much as possible. It's probably a man. It's probably a good ten plus hours worth of material. So obviously, we can't do ten hours on the coaching calls. But you guys know that I'm always going to show love, and we're always going to talk. If you guys have questions, we're going to get those questions answered. Make sure that everybody understands this because your success is my success. I need my kids to see more people like you actually winning. I need my kids to t stop looking at, um, what's his name, little Uzi Vert, who and uh, what's his name, all them people, all them people I don't know with the crazy hair. Um, I need them to stop looking at them and start looking at us and start looking at entrepreneurs, start looking at real estate investors, women, Agatha, Carla, uh, who else is on here? Maxine, Nakia, all y'all, Kendra. I'm calling y'all out. I have daughters, please. I need some women out here showing my daughters how to uh, operate a business. What do you go to for the webinar? Uh, it's uh, uh, tomorrow. Um, you just go to link on any link on my bio or any one of the, the posts I've been putting. You swipe up and you just put your email address in it. But I need I need the ladies out here killing it, man. Like little little Grace Gordon got Grace there. Grace got to grow up and see Agatha killing it. She got to be like, wow, I could do that too. Right? We need this. We need this. It's more. It's, it's more than just us. It's more than just building this business for us, for our families. Like I said before, if you are uh, an entrepreneur and your only goal is to make sure that you and your family are taken care of and you and your families and your kids kids are taken care of then you are a selfish human being because we can help so many more people it's more than just your immediate family stop being selfish god has given you so much giving you so many gifts use them let's help the world all right let's go love tommy, you guys tommy really quick is it going to be on instagram your link in the bio on link Instagram? In the bio. Yep, the link is in the bio. bio. If you go to any one of my last couple of stories, you swipe up, you can just put the email in. And then just like we get the emails um, today, even though we got, we got them a little bit late, you will get an email with um, the link to get hop onto the Zoom call. Okay? Thank you. No problem. All right, love you guys. Take care. Peace. Peace.